Hi, Andy Knieven here, and I'm going to walk you through the Minecraft Education Edition as a lot of people are now going to different resources and tools. Minecraft Education Edition, Minecraft uh, just on their blog page, released a update on March 11th this uh, past week on how if you have a Office 365 education account, uh, you can fill out a form, but uh, your school may be eligible but it would be having full access through June of 2020, which is an amazing thing. And even on this page, there's a remote learning toolkit, which kind of is a quick walkthrough of what Minecraft is and some different features and things uh, to look for once you are in it. Um, however, once you download and install Minecraft Ed, uh, you'll notice that you're down uh, volume or version 11260. And that's important when you are going to share and be in a multiplayer uh, world and so I'll show you that a little bit later on and so the first thing is is simply go hit play um, and I have already created a world uh, for kind of a beginner walkthrough so we'll go explore that first all right so as it generates um, you'll notice that there are some red blocks in front of us and to navigate and move in Minecraft is you're going to use the W, A, S, and D keys and then use your mouse to kind of look around. So a lot of students are really familiar with Minecraft. However, playing on a keyboard is a different thing or playing on an iPad or some uh, tablet. I mean, that's just a different uh, kind of gameplay. So uh, there's some walkthroughs on how to do that and I'll show you that towards the end as well. Uh, however, some specialty permission blocks are unique just for Minecraft Education Edition. And these are things that I learned from the very beginning and it really was a great uh, feature to use. So these red blocks are border blocks. So unless you are in the world builder mode, and so if you hit the forward slash and you hit WB, it simply toggles you between being able to, you know, control and break these blocks or if you, and actually use them if you are in world builder, but if I slash and hit WB again to make it false, if I tried to break them, then I get that shadowed black box and I can't go above, I can't try to jump over, I can't even dig under. Um, and so if I were to try to mine my way down and even try to break underneath them, I can't dig underneath. Um, and it's also a unique thing just for Minecraft Education Edition uh, for these blocks. So burying them is kind of a unique, uh, you know, trick or something that just catches some students off guard because um, it allows to give some barriers as you have students build in Minecraft Ed. Um, it's also a great thing that if you are in a multiplayer world, um, especially if you are the one managing it, that you can teleport somebody into a set of border blocks so that it would be kind of just like a minecraft break if they're not being collaborative or supportive in that multiplayer world so let's look back over or look over here to this next set and these are the allow blocks and allow blocks are kind of ineffective um, because you can build anywhere on in minecraft so i can place you know grass blocks all over the place you know even on uh, these allow blocks however if i were to turn it into an a immutable world. So if I start typing immutable, I see that I can hit, it gives me some options. If I hit tab, uh, it'll fill it in. And if I type true, whoop, there we go. And so now it's an immutable world. So I can place these, the ground block on those blocks. However, if I were to put it anywhere else, it doesn't allow it. So this is really great and I can destroy stuff, you know, on them. I can build everything on the, on these allow blocks. However, this is a really great thing um, to ensure that students are building in that set place. You don't have to go search and find it um, to you know navigate and watch what they are doing. Um, so the next one over here is our deny blocks. And deny blocks, whether um, uh, when you place it, it doesn't allow you to put anything on them. And it'd be really great that if you had built something and you didn't want anybody to destroy it or you know directions like signs that those can't be destroyed um, if you put them on a deny block so just a little bit of control you can walk on them um, however you just can't build on it and 
Now this little area over here, I simply put, you know, sand uh, in the ground just to identify a little bit different space. Uh, but you can set a world spawn um, by hitting that forward slash and you start typing set and you see how you have different options here. Uh, but I'll keep on typing. If I hit set world spawn and if I enter, it's going to set it wherever I currently am. However, you can also type in coordinates and it'll make that coordinate the world spawn point. So I'll make it where I am, uh, but I have a set point. So 48, 68, negative 20. And so if I had a player join, then that would be exactly where they would spawn to. Um, so doing that, I'll show you how we can have a uh, multiplayer you know, kind of game. Or it's really not a game, it's a learning tool for sure. So if it start hosting, so I hit escape to get to this menu and I have this tab over here for a host. So I'm gonna confirm and then it's gonna give me a join code. Um, so I have a book and quill, a pickaxe, a panda, and a pickaxe. If I don't like that combination, I can recycle it and create a new one. So I've got Alex, panda, map, and pickaxe. So to have somebody join, I have my document camera going on over here and my wife, she works in the same district, so I've logged in uh, as her on the iPad here, and Minecraft Ed does work on iPad. Um, and so I'm gonna hit play. And so um, there's all kinds of different things here, but I'm gonna hit join world. And I just now need to match up that join code. So I'm gonna hit Alex. I need a panda. And then I need a map and a pickaxe. So then I hit confirm and it tells me I'm going to join this other world. So I hit confirm because that's where I want to go. And as the uh, iPad joins, then once it connects, I'll notice that that person, yeah, they just appeared right at that spawn point. Um, and so being in uh, Minecraft on an iPad, uh, you can use the, you know, arrows to go forward and back. The right side here is jump. Um, but so it's a little bit different. Uh, however, if you click and drag across, you can see you know, different things that you're looking at. Um, so I'm gonna click back into the main game on the recording here. I'm gonna go back into it. So now how can we use this in the classroom or you know, for students to build, construct, to learn with it? I can use a book and quill and a camera and so that's all in the inventory now the thing to stress that I definitely learned as well is when I hit escape I get to my settings and that menu bar there um, or that pop-up and I can control everything here but I want to make sure one I'm in creative mode because that fosters you know innovation and creativity um, but also in it's peaceful, so I don't have to worry about you know survival of any sort. Um, and if I scroll down the coordinates, you know, so I know where I'm at. Um, but I can have it be always a day. But a big one down here is classroom settings. So when I scroll down to classroom settings, I uh, mobs are having all the animals and different you know things that you know may navigate through, uh, but not destructive ones. Uh, player damage, I turn that off so that, you know, if you have multiplayers, they can't damage hit each other or anything like that. Um, so, or damage from falling or anything um, as well. So the controls, the keyboard, all those features are in here. If I don't want to have the music as loud, I can control that. Or, you know, sound effects during the game, I can control that too. But if I go back to resume the game, and in creative mode, when I hit E, I have access to all of the options, all the um, items that I would want to have in my inventory. So I can search for things too. So one of them, I already have it in my inventory down below, but um, it's our book and quill. So if I type book, I have a book and quill. So I can click and I just drag it down. So I already have it there. Um, but another one is gonna be a camera. And so I start typing camera. I have a camera in here. I can you know, click and I drag it down. And so these two things are really great to 
document learning. So I'm first going to document things. So I'm gonna take pictures. Um, and so the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna come over to you know, these red blocks and I'm gonna right click and I'll hit use. So I'm gonna document that I used my border blocks. I might document that I had my allow blocks and my deny blocks. Um, but, oh, well, I've got another character here. So I can place my camera. Um, oh, uh, I can place my camera down. Um, oh, I am in, I need to turn the immutable world off. There we go. So now I can place because typically the student would already be, they don't have control of changing that stuff. So I can place my camera down. And that's going to follow me wherever I am once I click it. So if I were to take a selfie, because I'm going to take a selfie with my wife, because, you know, it's just easy to do since she's a character in the, the game. So I take a picture, and now I have uh, a memory. Now I want to document this. And so in my book and quill, and I, to navigate all these items down here, I simply am hitting the numbers 1 through 9. That's on the 8th spot. So I can use my book and quill and I open up a book. So here, um, this is a, so it's a really quick walkthrough. Um, I have other options down here to add pictures and different things, which is exactly why I am, I took some of those pictures. So if I were to um, go through and I want to take the selfie of myself and my wife here. So selfie, and then if I hit the right next page, maybe I want to document that I saw the allow blocks. And let's add another picture of the deny blocks. And let's say I want to be done with that. So I hit sign. Now, once you sign, you can't edit this anymore. Um, so I'm going to just call it Minecraft and I sign and close. So now when I have my book, it's now shining. Uh, so when I right click, I can click through, I can read my book. This would be an excellent way that students can document their process, their building or uh, documenting, you know, what they are learning throughout this process, but I can hit export. And it's going to open up where can I save this so I have um, already uh, created a folder in my minecraft ed and I'm going to save it in here and I had tried this before so there's a file already there um, but now I need to navigate and find where I saved it so if I go to my desktop go to my folder here um, and beginner walkthrough. So now it's saved as a PDF, which would be an excellent way that I could then share, send an email or submit it in whatever uh, LMS you may have to document your build process or what you had created uh, in Minecraft Education Edition. So then all of this is then each is a uh, PDF page. Uh, excellent use and documentation of your process within Minecraft. So you can stop hosting and then that uh, boots the other person out of the game and you save and exit um, and it takes you back to the main page. So when you are also navigating in Minecraft, instead of just joining or creating a, a world of your own, you can actually use a very vast resource that Minecraft has already created for you. And that is all of the pre-made worlds that are there. So if you click on view library, there are all kinds of lessons based on subject matter. Um, I teach math and science. So there's a whole slew of different ones, computer science, and some of these even have uh, sub lessons within them that you can navigate into. Um, but I would definitely recommend if it's new to you or your students is going to the how to play and going through your different tutorials on how to navigate and use it um, code builder and so there's just so much that you can do within Minecraft Ed 
I hope this is helpful, especially as there are many people starting to use this as a remote learning uh, resource. Thank you again, and uh, I hope you can even learn a lot more about Minecraft Edge.